This is going to be a demo on the multi-section surfaces. I want you to find your working with multi-section surfaces online documentation and make a snapshot of it. So we'll go ahead and snip this. <coughs> And then after the demo, you can actually try and uh, build their part. Uh, you can just build that from scratch. I'm going to copy this. Actually, what am I doing? I'm going to go to Word here. Insert a screenshot. OK, there's my Word doc on that. And I'm going to do three different demos of the multi-section. We're going to keep it pretty straightforward. This will be my first demo, lofting multi-section number one. <clears throat> and I'm going to start with wireframe and build a plane. I'm going to build a plane on this here and do an offset of zero and move it up here and select OK. We'll do a plane offset from the YZ and we'll go 5 inches. I'm going to go into this plane and create a sketch. I'm just going to keep it nice and simple. We'll do a rectangle. Oh, you know what? I'll use the grid and the axis to help me make it symmetrical just to make it easy so one two three over one two three over <clears throat> um, I'm just trying to see if I can make it mess up and I'll just delete delete this line here highlight everything Auto constrain this. Reference my axis system. So it's fully dimensioned. I don't like this. What is 0.25 over there? I'm just going to hold that in place there. OK, so let's go ahead and uh, exit out. And then on this profile, I'm going to try and create another rectangle. Keep it pretty straightforward. Uh, I feel like it's going to be too simple. I'm just going to not have any issues. It's actually gunning to see if I can't get an issue to come up. I'm just going to quickly constrain this. And I'll reference the axis. Okay, we'll exit out. We're going to attempt to create a surface. <clears throat> this lesson is going to be about multi-section. So grab this profile here and this profile over here. And select OK. All right. Now, sometimes this error is so minute, people don't even know there's an error. Okay, so look at that edge there. 
it seems odd that there's a like a double edge going on. All right, I'm going to show you a way to fix this. We'll pop back into my ISO view. If I double click this, you must understand that the first selection that you pick is section one and the second selection is section two. This becomes important when I want to do my edges and set my edges to have couplings. <clears throat> I'm looking for the different couplings here. All right, I don't know why this more button does not stick out to me. I for some reason it's not where my eye is trained to look from V5 but what we want to do is we want to establish these vertices from this corner to this corner to be one boundary edge and how I do that is I hit more and coupling is the trick so I want you guys to name this coupling I called it loft multi selection because I don't want to give it away yet but coupling is the trick and in the old system, you used to click here to add the coupling. When you click here or right click, I don't get that option like I used to on V5. So what I do is there's this plus button here. So we're going to add a line, and we're going to use the selection coupling default ratio. And again, order of selection is important. Um, I'm going to start with this side because the arrow is going this direction and come to the first point. And then I'm going to come to the second point, that vertice there. And do you see that green coupling line? So it's going to make these top and side surfaces here use the same boundary to connect those corners. So when I hit preview, look how nice and clean that corner is going to be. Rotate this around. See how we have the same issue here? So we're going to add a coupling. So you hit that plus button to add the coupling. It highlights that, and it's asking for the points that you want to use for coupling. Remember, this is section two. If I try and grab this point here, the error is you got to go to section one. So I'm going to hit OK, and I'll try and do section one now. And sometimes it doesn't like that, and it just gets hung up with this one still being selected. I'm going to try and grab this now. OK, and you see. In the coupling, you have two elements selected. So from here to here, we have a coupled edge for the top and the side. So instead of having one face, another almost chamfered face, if you would, and then the top face, we couple that edge to make it nice and smooth transition. I preview it. I just like to look at it before I commit. I'm liking my coupling edges much better than what I was given on the default type surface. So under ISO view, I'm going to click on this, slide this over, go to my Word doc. I've already typed in my multi sections. This is giving demo number one. Click this over. All right, and there's my answers for number one. I'll say okay to that. Let's go on to lofting exercise number two. I am going to create the same planes as I did last time. And I'll just kind of move them off to the side here. Whoopsie. Select OK. 
create another plane move it over here I'm going to do basically the same thing on this plane whoops on this plane I'm going to create a sketch I'll create that same rectangle let's do something a little different Won't be exactly the same. I'm going to highlight the top and I'm going to do something different. I'm going to corner the top here and we'll go with three quarter inch radius. Delete this line. Actually, you know what? And there's another trick I wanted to show you. Instead of deleting the line, let's make that line an axis so I can. That's exactly what I didn't want to do. Make that line an axis. Okay. So all I have to do is hit the arrow to the right of the line function and find the axis command and say yes. And now that's an axis. I didn't have to get rid of that. I can use that as a data image if I want to. I'm going to highlight this, auto constrain. I'll just say okay. Now see how I don't like how it does it to the tangents. So I don't like that. We do an undo. Highlight this whole thing and then auto constrain. And reference these two lines as datum to measure from in this case. And we'll stack it. And what's better here is I got overall dimensions. Now I don't know why that happened. And it does that. So my rule of thumb is... I don't put corners in until after it's constrained. So if I were really going to do this part, I would create the rectangle. Pop in the rectangle. Make this line, whoops. Make this line an axis. So it says yes to convert it to an axis. I'm going to highlight this whole thing. Auto constrain it, datum A, datum B, stack it, highlight the top profile, corner it, let's go 0.75. Notice this time the dimensions are much better. So learning how to manipulate the auto constraints is going to be what makes your life easier or not. You want to understand certain things. Corners, chamfers, notches are last if you're going to use auto constraint. See how easy I constrain that profile? Now this time we're going to create a sketch on the front. I'm going to try and get it to do something wicked here. too crazy. Is that symmetrical? Something doesn't look symmetrical. Oh, well, I'll have to come over here then. Okay, so this part's not symmetrical, so you'll get something a little different looking. I'm going to delete this line. So you notice I didn't do this symmetrical. Oh, sorry. I meant to show you this. This is going to be an axis now. It's like that line. Convert it to an axis. Highlight this whole thing. Auto constrain it. I'm going to reference this line and this line and stack it. We will exit out. All right. So in this example, the back has a radius and the front does not. Let's see if you can figure out how to create that surface. For further instructions, you can see part two on the next video. I'd like to let you try this on your own first before you try to do the next video. Even if you think you got it successful, go ahead and watch the next video. See what I do if I do the same thing or if I have something different to show you.